This is Fish Shell, a modern alternative to ZSH and Bash. In this video, I will show you the nice features about Fish Shell. You can think of this as a continuation of my previous video about Athena Nix OS. Since then, I changed a bit of settings such as the wallpaper since the default image looks too distracting for me. The first thing I like about Fish Shell is the terminal colors and syntax highlighting. For example, text inside double quotes have different colors compared to the ones outside it. Later in this video, I will show you how to configure this easily without using any complex configuration files. Files and directories also are using nice colors and they have icons as well. There are also useful tools integrated with Fish Shell which makes things more colorful. One example is that cat command is a wrapper for bat. So if we cat a file, it will be displayed nicely. Since bat is installed, you can use it to view different things such as process listing. Here we see that it acts as a pager, but with added line numbers, which is useful if you want to locate something. The colors are also integrated with syntax highlighting. For example, command completions nicely shows you suggestions. If we try to run a wrong or non-existent command, it will be highlighted with red. Even the error messages are useful, as it points us on the exact location of the error. If we type the correct command, it will be highlighted normally. Abbreviations are very useful also. This is similar to bash aliases, but with some differences. For example, we set aliases in bash in this manner. If we try to run the alias, it will produce the result, but won't show us the underlying command unless we explicitly look at it. In fish shell, we can create an abbreviation using the following command. Then when we run it, the abbreviation will be automatically expanded. This may be a small difference, but for some reasons I like it better than bash alias. Abbreviations can do more than that. For example, here is an abbreviation that will treat L as a placeholder for any command before piping to less. If we type L and hit enter, we see that it was expanded to a chain of commands. Our cursor position was automatically placed on the left side. From here, we can perform any command such as opening large files. Do note that you can use this with any command in any number of pipes. This feature of abbreviations is really useful, especially if you have long commands and you want to change a part of it before running. Another difference between fish and bash shell is the way on how to set variables. In bash, we set it in this manner. If we try to do same thing with fish shell, we will encounter an error. This tells us that using equal sign is not supported. What we need to do is to use the following syntax. Personally, either way is fine for me, but for some, this can be a deal breaker. Searching through command history is also good with fish shell. It also provides some level of fuzzy finding. I don't see FZF installed, so it might be a built-in feature. One thing that slows me down sometimes is when looking for command options in man pages as there are a lot of text to read. Fish Shell gives you a nice tab completion which avoids that extra step of opening the man page just to look for the right option. For me, this is a time saver since I can just quickly cycle through the different options without leaving the current command I want to run. Typically, customizing a theme is time consuming since you need to look for the right color codes and put it inside a configuration file. Fish Shell gives you a very easy way to configure the theme. To do that, we run Fish Config and it will bring up a web page. Inside this, we can choose from a variety of options. If we want to customize it further, we can just click the parts we want to change and choose the color we want. Same thing with the fish shell prompt. Using same web page, we can choose from different options. Fish shell also has a feature called private mode where any commands you type will not be recorded in the history file. To activate, we type fish-p. At the bottom, it will give you a little reminder that you are now in private mode. So let's say we type something. It will still appear in our current session's history, but if we exit it, we will not see any command we typed inside that mode. I find this feature useful, especially if I need to run some command that contains confidential data, such as a password or secret. Finally, if we want to see more features, we can run this command and it will bring up a web page. Fish is really an interesting type of shell. I never used this before, so I'll explore more as I go along in learning the Nix language inside Athena OS. If you know other interesting features of Fish shell, please share it in the comments below. I hope you learned something today. If you find my content valuable, please support me by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. See you on the next one.